Rob here at eToyota.com, and today you're going to be taking a look at the Timber and Rear Suspension Enhancement System on our 2019 Ram 2500. Now the reason why you might want a suspension upgrade on your Ram is because whenever we're towing a heavy trailer or we have a heavy load in the back of the truck, we'll notice that the back end is going to want to sag down. Well, not only are we putting a lot of strain and stress on our suspension, but we're actually doing a little bit of harm to the front of our truck as well. The back end's gonna get pushed down, the front end's gonna get raised up, which means our tires aren't gonna be in contact as well. Not to mention our headlights are gonna be pointing up rather than down at the road, so we're gonna be blinding people as we drive. So we're gonna go ahead and measure our truck the way it sits now, that we can get a baseline. We'll add some weight and remeasure it. So if I measure it from the center line of the wheel to the arch of the wheel well, I'm getting about 43 and three quarter inches here at the back. Now on the front, we're getting right about 41 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and add our load to the back and then we can remeasure. Now that we added our load in the back, just visually you can see that the wheel well is gonna be closer to the tire. And if I measure at the same center line point of the wheel to the top of the arch, right now we're only coming up to about 41 and a half. So it did drop it quite a bit. Now if we move up to the front, if I measure the same point, we're up to about 41 and a half inches. So it did bring that front end up. And again, that's gonna cause a lot of issues with your tire wear because our tires aren't sitting on the ground in the same position, changing the alignment. Not to mention the strain and stress on the front suspension and our headlights are gonna be off. But let's go ahead and take our truck out on the test course and see how it handles. Now as I come into my slalom course, you can definitely tell that there's a load in the back. The truck isn't quite as responsive as it is when there's no load back there. And I'm just kind of having to slow down in between the turns. And as I'm going in and out of the turns, you can definitely feel the body roll. It's just a lot more with that weight back there. It almost seems like the truck wants to lean before it starts to turn. And then it almost starts to pull me as I come around. Just genuinely feels like there's a heavy load in the back. And I'm getting this really big pulling feeling as I'm driving through the turns. As I go over my bumps course, you can immediately tell there's something in the back because it definitely has a jarring feeling every time I go over one of these bumps. It's resonating through the seat. It's just a really sharp bump. It's not normal. It's not very soft engagement. It's starting to get to my back a little bit. I really would not enjoy doing this for an extended period amount of time. Now that we have our timbers installed and we have the same load in the back, you can see that the gap here is not quite as big. And if I remeasure, now at the top of the wheel well arch, it's still a little bit lower than the factory. We're about 42 and 3 eighths inches, so it did drop a little bit, but it's a lot better in the back. Now on the front, we're right back at the factory ride height of 41 inches. So we don't have to worry about our braking or steering being diminished and our headlights are gonna be pointing in the right direction. So let's go ahead and take our truck back on our test course with our timbers and see how it handles now. As I'm driving through my course with the timbers installed, I can immediately feel a difference. As I'm going through the slalom here, it's a lot more controlled. It doesn't have so much of that body roll and that loose feeling in the front. It's a lot more stable and I feel like I can genuinely just go a little bit faster. As I go through our bumps course here, don't get me wrong, the bumps are still there, obviously, but it's not as such a jarring feeling shooting through the seat of the truck, so it's not so bad on my back. And it just generally feels like it's responding quicker as I get over the bump. It's not continuing to bounce as I go to the next one. So it's just a lot more stable, a little bit more comfortable. Our timbers are gonna replace our factory jump stop and mount in between our frame and our rear axle. Now if I hold up my factory jump stop, you can see just how much bigger the spring is. And that's because our factory jump stop really is only there to prevent bottoming out and the frame from hitting the axle. But our timbrins are gonna make contact much sooner and then they'll provide us that support we need whenever we're towing a heavy trailer or we have a heavy load in the bed. Our springs are made of rubber, so they are gonna have a nice elasticity to them, which means that they're gonna absorb a lot of those bumps and shocks when we're driving down the road as well. Now we're gonna have a timber and spring on each side of our axle. That way if we have an off-center load, it'll help compensate for that and keep our truck nice and level, or whenever we take an evasive turn and we get that body roll going on, this is gonna cut that down a lot because our springs are gonna come in contact sooner and provide us that support we need. 
Now compared to different options like air springs, our Timberlands are going to be much easier to install and they're completely maintenance free. Once we have them in, we can just enjoy our Ram, hook up our trailer and hit the road. With airbags, the install is very much more involved. We're going to have to run lines and then if we want, we can add a compressor, have to mount gauges and so much more. Not to mention, we're going to have to monitor the pressure pretty much every time we get in our truck because we are going to have a minimum amount we have to have in there. But again, with our Timberlands, we can just hook up our trailer and forget about them. Just keep in mind that it's not going to increase the payload of your Ram. They're just here there to help give us the support we need and give us a nice, comfortable ride. Our Timberlands are going to be progressive, which means that if we don't have any load in our truck, they're going to engage softly. But the heavier and more weight we put on them and the heavier load we have, the stiffer they're going to become. So when we need the support, they're going to be there. But when we're unloaded, we'll still have a nice, comfortable ride. And I think one of the best things about our Timberlands is the fact that we can install them without drilling, cutting, or even removing the tires. We can do this in our driveway without ever having to lift up our ramp. In fact, let's go ahead and put one side on together. To begin our installation, we want to park our ram on a nice flat level surface, make sure that the parking brake's set, and we want to move underneath, and we're going to go directly above the rear axle. Right above the rear axle, attached to the frame, we're going to have our factory jout stop. Now, this is going to be held on by two bolts, one in the front and one in the back. So we want to grab a 16 millimeter socket, and it may help if you use an extension and a swivel so we can actually get the socket on but have our drive tool well below the axle that we don't have to worry about any of these lines up here. And once we have our jounce bumper out, we can disregard this piece but we want to hold on to the hardware because we are going to reuse it. And we need to assemble our spring. Now we want to grab the upper bracket out of our kit, the spring itself, there is going to be an optional spacer, and then depending on if we use the spacer or not, we're going to use either the short or the long bolt. Now we already went in and checked our application, and essentially, once everything's put together, the spring assembly is going to look like this. Now the way you're going to figure out if you need that spacer or not, is you want to take either a measurement from the bottom of the spring to the top of this bracket, and measure where we removed our existing jounce stop. Or you can just take the assembly and place it on there. And if you have a gap in between the bottom of the spring and that perch that it's gonna sit on, then you would use this spacer here. But if you don't have a gap or there's just barely a gap, you don't use the spacer because what we're looking for is about anywhere from a half inch to an inch of gap in between the bottom of our spring and the spring perch. So here we can see that there's almost no gap. There's just very little bit of movement right here. But if I remove the upper bracket and pull that spacer out, and then set everything in place as it were gonna sit, our bracket is gonna be bolted against the bottom of the frame. So here we can see we have a little bit over an inch of gap here, which is just what we're looking for. So we're gonna install ours without the spacer. So since we're not gonna be using the spacer, we're gonna use the short bolt, and we don't have to worry about the long bolt in our kit. We're gonna take our short bolt, and I'm gonna take a 17 millimeter socket and an extension. I'm just gonna put it in my socket for now. And then if we look on the inside of our spring, there's a washer inside. We want to make sure that washer lines up with the hole. We'll take our bolt, we'll pass it through, make sure it goes through the washer and through the spring all the way. Kind of hold it with the socket. And we'll grab our bracket. And we're going to have a threaded hole. And we want to thread the bolt onto the end of the bracket at least get it started by hand so you know that it's attached and it's not cross-threading. Then we can take our 17 millimeter socket extension and a drive tool and we want to tighten it up until our spring is not going to be moving on that bracket anymore. Now we can take our spring assembly and get ready to install it on our truck. 
Now our bracket does have a label on it, it'll say left front with an arrow, but in case yours came off or didn't have it on there, we want the oval hole that's going to be a hole hole, that's going to be towards the inside of the frame going towards the front, and that notch hole will be towards the inside of the frame going towards the back. That way you know you have the correct bracket for each side, but we're just going to lift it up and those holes are gonna line up with the factory holes that we removed our hardware from. To make it easier to mount it, since this hole is slotted, I'm actually gonna get this bolt started first. Since it's gonna have a little notch in there, it'd be kinda of hard to get in there with a the socket, but I'm gonna put this in by hand pretty far, just enough to where I can barely get my bracket to slide in place and hang on it. Once I have it loosely in there, I know it's not going to come off. I'll go ahead and take my other factory bolt and I'll put it in the back side. Again, just going to put it in hand tight so the bracket will hold itself up and we can work on tightening up all our hardware. Then we can come back with either a 16 millimeter or a 5A socket or wrench. And I suggest using a ratcheting wrench on this rear bolt because it is in that channel, it makes it a little bit easier to tighten it down because we're not gonna be able to get a socket all the way in there. But we'll just go ahead and tighten up all of our hardware till it's nice and snug. Make sure everything is fully secure. And once you have both bolts tightened, we're gonna repeat that entire process over on the passenger side. So overall, I think our Temperance did help out quite a bit. Definitely made the ride a lot more comfortable when we have our load in the back. But with all that being said, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com and that'll finish up your look at the Timberland Rear Suspension Enhancement on our 2019 Ram 2500.